If it lasts another five years, if it lasts another 10 years, if it lasts another two months, I want to enjoy it and I'm going to keep pushing and uh, all, the, all the good and bad that comes with it. So many people are like, right, he's back. That means, that means we're going to stay up or he's back and we're getting too excited because he's over the hill. I'm like, cool, we'll see. I know what I'm going to do, we'll see. But yeah, whoever's written my script, whoever's looking out for me up there, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's time for me to come back with a bang. Well, this breaking news just coming into us. The Watford captain, Troy Deeney, will be out for several weeks. He has just undergone a minor knee operation today. Thursday before the QPR game. Again, training really well. Me and Domingos went for a ball and I've brushed him off, but his knee is hit the side of my knee. But as it's happened, I've kind of gone, ooh, and like kind of let him run off with the ball. And I was like, nah, that's not, something's not right. But then I, you know, actually carry on, carry on. And I thought it was more of a dead leg kind of situation. Managed it again through the QPR game. Um, if you remember, I didn't actually shoot in the QPR game. I made sure I didn't shoot just because I right, let this settle down, but we'll get the minutes in the legs, that kind of thing. And then, yeah, just kept feeling it. And normally with a dead leg, it takes me about six to 10 days for it to go. So I was like, ah, we'll be all right for the lead up to the season. And then just kept staying and kept staying, but it, it'd swell up, go back down, swell up, go back down. So I was like, oh, that's, that's fine. Um, and then after the Everton game, it just swelled up and just stayed. And I was like, well, that's not, Right, that's not how it's supposed to be. So, on the, that happened on Saturday, Tuesday when I saw the specialist, they say my knee was massive, it didn't come back down. And um, yeah, we, he said within five minutes of seeing me that needs to be operated on. Um, loads of floating uh, bits of bone and cartilage. And it's just basically got, a bit of bone got lodged here. So every time I was trying to open and close my knee, which was irritating and that's why the swelling kept going up. And yeah, we took that out and that's when the process started. Temp season, trying to be the, 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 the most important. Um, you have people trying to like put you in a wheelchair and say, go on, get your zipper frame, off you go, you're, you're 31 now, the days of uh, being young and energetic joy are all done, but I had a real point to prove that this was going to be my best season. Um, and yeah, just, I was, I was great, I was flying, I was really looking forward to getting a strong pre-season under my belt. Um, and also, like, in the summer I did a lot more than I would normally do, so my weight was, was pretty cool and pretty on point. So I was in good nick and was just ready to go and was frustrated. I think the whole Austria trip turned out to be real frustrating. And um, yeah, I had a chat with you walking back a few times saying like how much it annoyed me. And then ended up playing the last game I think, before we, f we flew home and it was didn't feel good at all, but I was just good to be out and, and be part of the, of the boys. I'm used to playing with injuries. I, I know not too many people know, but like, got arthritis in my ankle, so I have injections for the last what, three years, regularly to play. Um, just kind of one of the people that just go, oh, if you don't stop me, carry on, let's carry on. And I say this to really go and talk to someone, and they go, no, like you can't, because if you. The actual thing as well, I actually drove myself to the appointment, walked to the appointment about a mile and a half, and then went, oh, you have it operated on? I was like, ah. So I don't bend it, don't do anything. I'm like, well, I've got to get home. So drove home and then dealt with it from there, really. So, uh, yeah, it's not, been, it's not been an easy one to take in and, and digest as well in terms of naturally, I'd say, what, 13, 14 years as a pro? This is the first proper injury. So when I had my hernia, it was like, Right, haven't earned yeah. Snip, try and get back as quick as you can. My hamstring, three weeks, cool, let's go. And, that, and that's it, I kind of get on with it and, and smash it out, but this one was like, we were saying, what, 14 to 16 weeks? So that's when you go, oh, we're in the three to four month stage here, and like, you can't rush uh, the process too much. You have to 
stay in and do all the, the, the long boring stuff really. There's big games when I've played injured and, and scored the winner. Everyone goes, oh, Dini looked great today. Leicester uh, here uh, when we won 2-1. Um, people don't know I tore my shoulder in that game at the, after when I scored. Um, so what, four minutes in? Played the whole of that game, get the assist, we score. Everyone says it's the best I've seen me play that year. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it swings around about it. It's only when we're losing or I'm, I'm not doing what I should do. Naturally, people then go, something's not right or we, we don't know about it, so he must be, must be playing poorly. So, yeah, you, you take it with a pinch of salt, but um, in this one, I don't think there was anything I could have done. If I would have did it in Q, at QBR, I'd have still been out for the three to four months. I didn't think it was going to be enough, because there's a lot of times I've gone and people go, oh, this doesn't look great. And but again, because I swell quite big, I was like, oh, maybe it'd just be one of them ones where they drain it a couple of weeks and I'll be, I'll be back in. Um, but the second they said it was definitely surgery. And again, I saw the best around, so it's not a case of I just saw you know, someone at the NHS who was just like, yeah, I think in my opinion I'd do this, but go seek a second one. He was, he's the best around and saw the scan, tested my knee and was like, nah, can't, we can't not let that happen. Um, so yeah, I've got a hole in the knee now, like a four centimetre hole. It is what it is, you crack on. I didn't, I didn't take it well the first day, probably. So yeah, I had it on a Tuesday. Wednesday, I was a bit fairly sorry for myself. And then, to be fair, the missus just stuck it on me and just said, come on, this is what you've got to do. You know what you've got to do. Stop whinging, do as, you, do as you're told. And when you can push on, we'll push on. And that is literally what we've done. So first week was literally just sat at home, did nothing, and that hurt me more than any of the other stuff, to literally have to ask her to make me a drink and, you know, like to be dependent on somebody when you're normally the, the one who's so dependable. So, uh, yeah, that, that hurt, not gonna lie. People know me, they don't understand. I like to kind of foresee how things are going to happen and then I'm quite mentally preparing myself before it even happens. So I already have an expectation of what people are expecting of me. So yeah, anything that comes, I'm kind of ready to take it on. So in, in that instance, I was ready to chill out for a week and you know, pig out in that sense as well, eat food and just do what I can't normally do and, and, and de-stress. The doc is, is the doc, he's great, he's, he helps out. Um, and also, you know, he toes the line between what I would want to do in terms of cut corners to be back and obviously the professional side of it and says, look, if you do this, this is, this is what's going to be bad. How's it been? Still a little bit? Yeah, it's been good. Not been, not been too bad, to be fair. You happy in the gym? He's just worried about, not worried, but more saying he keeps getting stuck in that out of gutter. Out of the shoulder? Yeah. So again, you look at that after a few weeks and maybe, in worst case, just have to drain it. So that's normal, though, right? Yeah, that's what you said. But but Pete and Lee have been literally from day one. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Sit down, talk me through it. Again, their professional advice and and what they see as as a way of getting me back a a little bit faster, but also safely. But also knowing my characteristics of you tell me to do something and I'll get it done. Not a will. We're going to do this and. You know, then at home you're going to do that. It's literally, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. If it hurts, we stop. If it doesn't, we carry on. Cool. That's kind of what I need. Just put a little target in front of me and I'll keep pushing and keep pushing. And yeah, we've had, had some ups and downs along the way and, you know, some interesting conversations. It is a very good relationship. <laughs> we have ups and downs. We say the truth. And once the truth's out, then we yeah. get on with it. And but well, they've been they've been great. Both of them have been great, and the think the biggest thing for me is they were very keen to say that even when you're back playing, this is a six month manager job to make sure that the knee is strong and secure so that I can carry on playing. 
because the doctor actually said my knee in terms of the joint today is like a 20 year old so I've got a real good strong foundation of a knee I just need to um, look after myself and look after the knee itself and not overdo it. This is the target so you all right, I've, I've smashed all the targets you said I'm do. Probably doing a little bit more, but that was probably a good time as well, because he, because I was ready to go. Right, we're going to start running now, and he was just like, whoa, 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 this is you're pushing too much. You know, the the bone bruising is still high, the knee swollen. We've got to strip it right back, and then that, yeah, like I think you I remember you seen me, and I was, I was gutted. Yeah, do as you're told. Bit, bit. Yeah, a bit of a kick in the nuts, that. Because, again, I'd thought, right, he's going to say, yes, 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 maybe we need to get that down a little bit, but we crack, we crack on, and he, he didn't say that. Yeah, I think it, went, I think it went well. The surgeon is really optimistic and positive about the whole thing, so um, had a look at the knee, said that, um, improving at the rate he expected. Um, all he said to Troy was, he knows Troy's you know, keen to get back, big personality, and he just said, Listen, just make sure you take your time, do everything you need to do, and don't try to rush. Yeah, in that moment, it was a real subdued moment. I, I remember we were just walking back to the car, and I was just like, I don't, I don't get it. I've done everything that they've said to do, and it's, it's not working. And then at that point, you have that a small doubt when you start questioning, right, is your, is your body giving up now, or can I, can I still do what I used to be able to do? And um, again, because I've always got older friends, and in football, I've always had people that are like 10 years older than me. So they were like, you wait, watch when you get to 30, everything starts hurting. And you're like, uh, is this what they're talking about? I'm at that point. But um, yeah, it was just a bad, bad few hours. I got a real good thing, which has always helped me out in football. I can close the door on football. I can go, right, that's that. And I get into home life and that's it. As long as I'm happy there and secure there, then I'm, I'm always all right. So when I got home, I was, I was pretty cool after that. Yeah, I'm all right. Um, gutted as well. You know, when you come like here and you start getting the feelings and seeing the fans of that, you're like, ah, oh, wish I was playing. But nah, it is what it is, isn't it? And like, the boys have literally just come out now and you're seeing them out on the pitch and you're like, I wish that was me. But it's a process, isn't it? So it's all be what, a couple of weeks ago and I weren't too happy. So yeah, I'm having a good day today. So I'm just going to try and enjoy it. I'm not a great watcher, no. I. I get frustrated when I watch because I don't. There's like might be times when someone crosses the ball first time. I'm like, you don't do that when I'm playing. You know, like that kind of thing. Or, or you then end up becoming a fan as well, and forgetting that when you're, however high up, looking down, it's so much easier to play football. You're like, well, why doesn't he just do that and do this? So there is times like that. It's frustrating, and I think the, the overall frustration with those two games as well was we were the better team should have won, had, had huge chances to, to score and win the game, uh, but didn't take it. So then you go into selfish mode and go, if that was me, would I have? Could I have? You know, you, you start doing that and then that spurs you then go, right, I need to get back in and, and, and keep doing what I'm doing. So after both of those games, I've got home and, and done the session when I get in. We've got to go and try to score, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, Daddy has to score when he's better, yeah? Look at Watford fan! Yeah, there's some Watford fans here right now. Then you're a Watford fan, but you're a, you are the Watford fan that they're looking for. Oh, is he? Do you want to tell them that, yeah? No! <laughs> you say I've had more time with the kids. Yes and no. Um, yes, game day I've had more time with them. In the week, absolutely not. Um, it's probably one of them when I'm older, I'm going to have to sit and explain to the kids, like, look, I give this everything just so you could have everything. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, when Miles is 10, Amelia's going to be five, um, Isla's already five, and I'm just sitting there going, look, this is, I'm not here, but the reason I'm not here is because I'm doing this. You know, I break it down as simply as I've got to pay the bills. But also, I want them to understand that if they want to do something, they can do anything in this world. But also, if you want to do it, you've got to work hard. And there are sacrifices that come along the way. And unfortunately for me, it's been the family and the, the 
probably the personal time really. It's very difficult to impact because when they're out training, I'm working and you can't do it so that I'll watch their training and instead of do whatever and then do your work. You'll be here till six, seven, eight o'clock most nights. So um, you can't allow the time to, to pass by, but also you can say things and, you know, I have a quiet word with people, but it's, it's a bit tough because, you know, like a, lot of the, a lot of the good guys come in for a lot of stick and it, it's a shame because I'm used to taking it for a lot of people. I don't mind taking it, but you know, like, Fuzzy's coming under a huge amount of pressure at times. And you see, like, Seb Pro will come back in after a long layout. They get injured again, and you know you see the what it's like on social media, and you're like, he's a good guy. You know what I mean? Like the good, the good guys are really like the ones who really want to be in and around, and you see them, see them struggling, and it's not nice. It's not nice because obviously you, you you be there and you like to help everybody, and you know for a fact no one's going. Ah, love to lose today. No one. We're not. We're not built like that. So um, yeah, it's been difficult, but also you you then. Your character shows through them in them in them tough moments. I think Cab has been been great. You know his, his characters really show through. Roberto Pereira has been fantastic as well, and I think the other side of his game has really shown through his his work rate, his desire to win, and his his um, give me the ball, I'll show you kind of attitude. Um, yeah, and has dragged the team through a lot of you know a lot of the hard moments. So yeah, it's it's been tough. Um, but you, you see all the boys, as I say, could go through every single one and everyone's going to go like, why didn't you mention me? Why didn't you mention this one? But you could go through it for everyone. But they're the, they're the ones who I've seen and gone, oh, yeah, go on then. Like you lot are really making a, a huge impact in terms of trying to drag this, this, this team to, to where it needs to be. We had the drainage and, and all of that kind of situation as well. So. I think before that one, I just had 100 millilitres taken out my knee. Um, and that was hampering me because it wasn't moving. So we drained it. And from the day we drained it afterwards, it was just like, sound crude, but if you'd been constipated and then done a poo, that's, that's how it felt. It was like, oh, here we go. I can crack on with the day. And then everything after that is just snowballed. And, you know, you guys have saw it quite a lot as well. We've been around, but yeah, definitely accelerated after that. For once in my life, I've actually questioned myself. I don't normally question myself. I normally just do and go, ah, it was all right at that. But um, yeah, I got on the walk bike and I, I remember just trying to spin it, but my knee wouldn't bend properly. So it was kind of like a down motion instead of the full circling motion. So just things like that, and I couldn't even reach like 100 watts. Whereas, you know, to, to give people context, the, I think my max wattage on there is like 2,150. So I couldn't even hit like 100, and I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah, and again, but again, flipping it on the positive side, I was on a bike, whereas I'd been on crutches probably the, the week before. So yeah, it was, it was real interesting, like, mad dynamics where sometimes you go in, oh, I can't wait to get on the bike. You get on the bike and you're like, can't wait to get on the treadmill. You never actually take that moment for what it is. So yeah, it was, it was tough. And I had some, I've had some real tough sessions on that bike. So yeah, it's been good. That was massive, yeah. That was, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. When you start going on that, you're like, right, I'm, I'm progressed away from the bike. The bike is always gonna be the, the nasty one where you gotta do all the hard, in uh, CV and endurance work on that, and um, but when you get on the on the running, you're like, you, yeah, you could you feel like all right, I'm not too far away from putting my boots on now. Um, so yeah, that was that was a massive day, but it was also keen to get like, can I run a little bit faster? Hands up, you've got to go faster. <laughs> can I push it? And that, I, as I said earlier, that's my biggest thing. I do a little bit, and I'm like, right. Can we push it a bit more now? Now I know that that works, can push it a bit more. So, yeah, it was good and I'm glad they controlled that because the knee ha uh, hasn't reacted at all. The leg press is not, it's not a friend of mine, but we're going to have to make it a friend for the next six months. The what bike, honestly, no one understands the level of pain that goes through your ass at that moment. Feel good? No? 
my ass is in turmoil. Oh. It's 45 minute bikes and absolute chafage is not good for anyone. Um, and then Lee's got this thing where he likes to change the times and wattages. So you go, oh, I'm only going to do half an hour. And then before you know it, it's like 48 minutes in and you go faster than before. So yeah, it was, it was good fun. Everything, everything about it was good because it hurt. But when I got off the end of it, I'm like, all oh, right, that's, that's what I needed. Yeah, that, that's what we needed to get to get done and to progress and then the next day you go in and again knee has it swollen and you're like oh I can do it so a mental tick is, is for that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a weird feeling to be fair. I have um, the left one just give me the left one. I haven't, uh, I haven't put them on for ages now. Well Everton. Lifetime ago. Very, very nervous. Because again, at that point, you're like, well, I've done all of them, was it nine weeks? Nine weeks I've done all of that hard, slow, methodical stuff, uh, boring stuff, essentially. Now you're getting out on the pitch. And again, it's, it's the running mechanics. So uh, people won't understand this, but I've been progressed safely, but very quickly. I think you've said it to me on numerous occasions, like the turnaround is, is remarkable. So. I think you're probably looking from anti-grav to actually on the pitch six days. Yeah, about six days. So then going on the pitch and starting to run from literally plodding around, trying to get the dynamics of that to training with the 23s was 10 days. So yeah, I don't really have the process of going, right, we'll slowly build up, build up, build up. We've been hitting it hard, but again, hitting it safely. No, that's a good ball. That's me mentally getting through it. Go, that's what it's for. Because I think you can definitely take it for uh, granted what playing football means. Like I said as I was walking up here, like I genuinely miss playing on that bitch. Um, you know, people that know me, like I genuinely love football. Like it is my my thing. Um, but I, I just, yeah, there's certain times and there's certain, you know, like the long boring runs. They're not they're not really my my bag. I'm more of an explosive sprinting kind of stuff. So when I'm doing them long runs and I know it's like a, an eight minute run, for example, I'm like, right, when I feel like I want to stop, that's what it's for. That's why. Because if you stop now. They're, gonna, they're getting ahead of you. They're going to be faster, they're going to be sharper. So, yeah, all of the stuff I do is for, is for a mental log and, you know, start seeing who I'm trying to catch. It's funny because I can put myself in their situation and when I can remember being with the young boy and you're like, you kind of want to leave an impression so that if he goes back to the first team, he goes, oh, he was good, you know, or that little he, he smashed me. So I was kind of ready for that. But um, the good thing that happened, that was a Sunday, Saturday morning, I did some running with Lee and I fell over, but I got straight back up and, you know, because you're in that mode of, you got to finish the run, straight back up and ran. And Lee was like, did you see what you did there? I was like, yeah, I stacked it. He's like, no, no, you landed on your knee. Got straight back up and didn't even think. I was like, oh yeah. So again, mental, mental blocks had been ticked before I'd even got to, the, to that point. Um, and yeah, it was good with the kids there. They're probably not used to having someone speak as much as me, but um, yeah, just chatting to them. And I'm not one of them people that dislikes the young boys. I am um, actually kind of empathise with them to an extent because when you're young, you think you know it all. You know it all, you're better than everybody else. And you have that sense of entitlement. It's only when they start seeing the, the real professional, professionalism, sorry, the levels, uh, the speed, the intensity, then they go, oh, yeah, maybe you're right. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good it was a good introduction. A um, few goals, a few losses, a bit of frustration, but then yeah, just just to gauge where I'm at really. But again, I'm I'm a re I'm a realist. I know for me, it's trying to find the aim again, get your eye back in, and different styles of shots. So instead of 
foot, every foot being side foot and lacing them, trying to get the angles. All these different things that people would go, oh, you just run up and kick it like, yeah. But again, if I have to shoot my left foot, there's an electric shock that runs up my right leg. Like little things like that, getting used to that, getting used to my knee clicking when I kick the ball. So all these different things, when you're in tune with your body, you understand and go, okay, cool. And that's why, you know, like you make the bet with the goalkeepers, because I'm like, don't take it easy on me. Like, if these standards not to the point where I can't score past you, I don't mean it's disrespectfully. I can't expect to do that in the Premier League. So you raise your game, I'll raise my game. And if you pay someone for a service, that's what you do, don't you? I genuinely wanted to just be in the middle of the pack, kind of just easing and, and not have the attention. Didn't help when he was following me with a camera and everyone noticed it. But um, yeah, now honestly that first that first bit was more of a, let's see, let's see how it goes. Don't, I didn't have any expectation. I didn't, like I say, I just wanted to, that's the part I've been training for, for what? Uh, be 11, 11 weeks now, that's what I've been training for to be back in the team, to have the banter, to have people hammering me when the camera's behind me, to, you know, people go, oh, we've got the new signing, you know, all of that, all the little bits of banter, that's what I've been missing. So, no, it was nice, but again, as soon as it's right, we started to train, it's right, it's competition now. I'm gonna let you not know, this is why I'm back, this is this is what I'm about, so. Um, yeah, did, did well, running went well, finishes were decent, so. Can't, can't complain, but again, my own personal was like probably about a quarter where I want to be. The, the football side of it's never worried me. I know what I am. I'm not going to suddenly start doing step overs and putting them in the top corner past people. I know how to finish. Like, I, again, without being begetted, I don't score as many goals as I've scored without knowing how to score. Um, that was never the issue. It's the can I get up to speed quickly? Can I? when we look at the data afterwards, am I running as fast as the others? Um, and thankfully in that, in that particular drill, I was actually the fastest and ran the most distance. So yeah, it's a good confidence boosters, but it's more of, a, okay, my levels are not too bad, but got to raise it even more because the expectation's there now. For me, when I get us out of this spot and when I get us safe, and I say just me, it's a whole team, obviously. But yeah, if I do my part to do that, yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a big moment. Definitely be a big moment. But then I'm like, all right, what should we do next year? But I definitely am chasing down goals and, and personal targets and just keep proving myself right. I used to want to prove people wrong. Now I want to prove myself right. And that's that's the, the biggest difference. I'm always learning. Um, Mine's more learning to deal with frustrations and take, take them frustrations of what, not necessarily what I do, but what others may do and not let that affect my day and what I'm trying to do. Um, but in terms of what I've learned, endless. Um, just got so much more to do. And you know what, there's a, there's a part of me that I think others have learned, you know, because I think, as I say, been here that long, what, 10 years now, Fans can start going, ah, we don't need him. And then the out, that was the outcry after Everton was get him out of the team. And I remember somebody wrote a comment like, um, you've just had this operation because you were scared of being dropped. I'm, like, I'm scared of some things in life. Being dropped is definitely not one of them. Um, and then the same person has wrote about two weeks ago, need Deeney back. Didn't think I'd say, need Deeney back. He's you know, he's the heart and soul of the team, and you're like, oh, okay. But that's where you take it with a pinch of salt, what people say. But there has been a, a bigger outcry and an understanding of, you know, what, as much as Watford's moved on, there's, I've been a big part of that. And so while I can still offer, there's, there's definitely space for me. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with giving it all. Remember, like, and I, I don't want to go back through all my journey, but I'm not really supposed to be here. So I'm like, right, cool, let's, let's keep going, let's keep pushing. And if it lasts another five years, if it lasts another 10 years, if it lasts another two months, I want to enjoy it. And I'm going to keep pushing. And uh, all, the, 
all the good and bad that comes with it. Like people who live for social media, I genuinely find it funny. So many people are like, right, he's back. That means that means we're going to stay up, or he's back, and we're getting too excited because he's over the hill. I'm like, cool, cool. We'll see. I know what I'm going to do. We'll see. But yeah, whoever's written my script, whoever's looking out for me up there, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's time for me to come back with a bang. Well, for, for us, the, uh, the way to, um, to have a Dean in the bench is, is uh, the presence of the, of the Dean is very interesting for us because it's, it's, it's making us power, it's making us confidence and everything. Then uh, the situation in the, in the match was a little bit different, changed a little bit at the moment. We need to change one player in the first half, so we, lo we lost one substitute and then it's, it's a little bit different. But anyway, I think he understands perfectly what is the situation. Obviously he's a big character, you know, he's, he's a club captain and um, yeah, it's good to have him back, you know, in and around the boys, um, obviously coming on as well, uh, getting a few minutes under his belt and, um, uh, you know, building up his confidence, um, you know, back in, you know, his, uh, his knee where he had his injury and stuff is very important and it's important for the team as well. He's, he's a big character in and around the training ground as well um, and with the boys, so having his presence back is, is needed. You right? As always, Scott. <laughs> I told you he knew. How is it today? Stud or what? Usually a stud, right? I'm always mold, isn't I? Mold? It, it, it'll take a stud, yeah. The middle, the middle hasn't been watered yet. Okay. But we'll water before the warm up and then again before the game as well. What's going on here? Because he's back at the Vic, there's got to be a camera in, the, in his face, isn't there? It is. He's mic'd up as well, mate. Back and, and do 90 minutes. We feel a lot better now. Um, the lead that's why they're not going to use the case of the now, really.
and it's about the old choice to be Fighting angry goals. That's it. Thank you. Here, here, and here. I know you didn't get me to do because I weren't good cool enough last year, but maybe I am that. No worries. Oh, yeah. Click here, here, or here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. See, I can still be fun at 31. I can still be fun. Down with the kids, eh?